This video on second order responses looks at creating quick and simple sketches. So you will remember that we're looking at differential equations of this form d2x dt squared plus 2z to omega n dx dt plus omega n squared x equals f. And what we'd like to do is quickly form a sketch for the expected behaviour for a step response. And the question you might want to ask, therefore, is what data do I need? What computations do I need to do in order to get a quick but accurate enough sketch? What we're going to suggest is that if you've got key values like steady state, where does it finish, overshoot, and frequency of oscillation or some key times in the plot, that will be enough to get an indicative sketch which is good enough for most engineering purposes. Now, we're going to assume that the initial conditions are zero, and we've said that many times because they complicate things and you cannot do anything generic if you have different initial conditions. You can get the steady state direct from the parameters. We've done that before, but we'll remind you in a little bit. The damping ratio and the peak overshoot are strongly related, so those are things that you're going to have to do computations for. So you remember that we've got that the overshoot is given by this formula here e to the minus zeta pi over root 1 minus zeta squared however in order to do that you first of all need to compute the damping ratio zeta so compute damping ratio once you've got that compute peak overshoot using this formula the peak overshoot time is given by another simple formula t equals pi over omega d or pi over omega n root 1 minus zeta squared. So that's another computation you need to do. So if we start counting these up, computation 1, find the damping ratio. Computation 2, find the overshoot. Computation 3, find the peak time. As a note, subsequent overshoots or undershoots are given by times like 2t, 3t, 4t, and so on, and have magnitude O squared, O cubed, O to the 4. O was given here. These calculations should be enough for you to get a decent sketch. Now, this slide's here just for completeness. If you actually wanted the solution as a function of time, zero initial conditions, unit step response, it's given there. I'm not going to dwell on it because that was covered in the previous videos. Let's start with an example then. We've got x double dot plus 2x dot plus 6x equals 1, and we want to do a sketch of the response of this system. Now, first of all, let's look at the steady state. We can see that the steady state comes from these two expressions here, which is why we get x equals 1 over 6. You'll also remember from the initial conditions, the initial gradient is 0. Now, the natural frequency comes from the 6. We've got omega n squared equals 6. There's not really a computation involved there, it's just a statement. So the natural frequency is the square root of 6. We can get the damping ratio, therefore, from this formula here, looking at the coefficients. Zeta equals 2 over 2 omega n, which is 1 over root 6. The peak overshoot time comes in this formula here. T equals pi over omega d, or pi over the square root of omega n squared root 1 minus zeta squared. If we put in what we already know, omega n squared equals 6, and zeta is 1 over root 6, and we put those formula in there, this is what we get, and it simplifies to pi over root 5, which is approximately 1.4. Next, we need to calculate the first overshoot, which we're using this formula here, and we've already got zeta, you'll see, and we substitute that value of zeta in, and we get e to the minus pi over root 5, or approximately 25%. So let's summarise what we've got so far. The steady state is 0.167. The first peak is at 1.4, and subsequent maximum and minima will be at 2.8, 4.2, and so on. The first overshoot is 25%, so the second overshoot is going to be a quarter for quarter, that's um, much smaller. I don't think it should be, uh, sorry, the next overshoot is 0.25 cubed, let's be precise, which is 1.6%, which is very small, and so on. Now, if you're wondering where this 0.042 comes from, basically we've done 0.25 times 
because one that's the uh, steady state and the initial gradient is zero if we put all that data together then we get this sketch now if you ignore the line for now what we've done is we've marked the start point zero initial conditions we've marked 1.4 as being the first peak and we said at the first peak we had a 25% overshoot so we've marked that point there the second peak or the undershoot is at roughly 2.8 and that's going to be 0 0.25 squared off from the steady state so we've marked that point there the second overshoot is roughly at 4.2 and that was 1.6 percent so we've marked that cross there so if you look at what we've done we've marked the start point and then a few interim points and then what we've done is just use the smooth curve to join these together and you'll see I've done that by hand and you'd struggle to get a sketch much different from what I've done by hand once you would put the circle and the crosses on the plot second example then so sketch the unit response unit step response for the following system so I've got x double dot plus 2x dot plus 17x equals 25.5 first of all let's look at the steady state so the steady state comes from 17x equals 25.5 or x equals 25.5 over 17 which is 1.5 so there's the steady state next let's look at the damping ratio well zeta is going to be 2 over 2 root 17 which is 1 over root 17 using the parameters in the model and I missed a step there I do apologize we've said that omega n squared equals 17 or omega n equals the square root of 17 so clearly that's a value we've used to calculate the damping ratio having got zeta I can now calculate the overshoot using our standard formula so if I put in that zeta of 1 over root 17 then what I get is 0.46 or 46% depending on which way you want to look at it next let's find the peak time so again we've given the formula down here and if we substitute in the numbers to this you get actually quite a neat answer which I'll let you look at later but you get just pi by 4 and the reason for that is omega n squared is 17 whereas zeta squared is 1 over 17 and you put it together and you find you end up with a square root of 16 so pi by 4 which is approximately 0.78 for the peak time so now we've got the key data what you've got to do is put that key data onto a plot now we've just done the plot for you here but what you'll notice there's the peak time roughly 0.78 here's the undershoot time that will be roughly two times 0 0.78 which is what roughly 1.55 there's the third peak time which will be roughly 2.3 and so on okay what about the overshoot size this was 46 percent and therefore this gap in here is going to be 0 0.46 squared the steady state marked here 1.5 so again as before it won't take long to mark across across if you want another one across and draw a smooth sketch going between those points here's some examples for you to try by yourself so we're just going to leave this up long enough for you to press pause and so you can type them down and have a go okay I'm going to go to the hints now so make sure you've done the questions before you proceed so here's some hints to give you an idea about the solution so hints what the natural frequency what the damping ratio what the damped natural frequency might be but I've not computed the overshoot you'll have to do that yourself a summary of the key values that we've used and these are also on the previous video so we've used the peak overshoot the decay rate per peak peak overshoot time and the overall solution if you actually need it at some point so in conclusion we've shown that you can sketch solutions to underdamped second order ODEs using relatively straightforward computations and therefore fairly quickly 
Key observations allow you to compute an indicative sketch quickly. Now, some just some warnings. These observations assume you've got zero initial conditions. So obviously, if you don't have zero initial conditions, you're not going to be able to use the uh, calculations we've used here. However, you are going to have the same indicative key characteristics, which is the ratio of peak to peak and the uh, in terms of times and decay rate.